Here is the best guide on YouTube on how to remove the turbo from the M47 engine found in the BMW E90, E91 and E87. Summary of what to expect in the video. A step-by-step -step explanation showing everything you need to know to remove the turbocharger from the car. All the tools you need for the job and the parts that you're advised to also replace alongside the turbo. In the description below, I've included my links to the tools and parts I've used to do the job. Lastly, I've included all the relevant torque specs for the major components that get removed during the process. Having those to hand will allow you to watch the video in reverse and install your new turbo. Here is our M47 engine. Locate the following three T20 Torx screws. Use a T20 Torx screwdriver bit to remove them. Now you can remove the air intake plastic duct. Next, pull out the air intake hose pipe. Mine is pretty old and pretty beaten up, so I have to replace it with another one. The replacement is made from premium polypropylene. This is how the air intake hose pipe sits in front of the air intake. Next, we need a size 5 hex screwdriver bit to take the engine cover off. Once you unscrew them, gently lift and pull the cover towards you. It's held by two plastic guide tabs at the back of the engine located here and here. Let's focus on removing the air filter top cover located right here. We need to remove all of these plastic covers including the microfilter housing that's underneath them. The right side covers the brake fluid reservoir and the left side covers the fuse box. Yours might be in reverse, but I'm driving a car with the steering wheel located on the right side. Then we have the pollen filter housing, which is mounted to the cowl panel, which is located from side to side in the engine bay. To remove the plastic covers, use the rubber clips and plastic clips, and then slide the wires to the side. Then the cover simply comes off. Repeat on the other side, rubber clips, plastic clips, wires. Next, the pollen filter housing is held by four size 8 or 10 mm hex bolts. Once done with those, in my case, I'm left with two flathead Phillips screws. Whichever ones you have, unscrew them and the housing will come off. The pollen filter sits inside the housing held by plastic clips. If you simply unclip them, the filter comes off and it's always a good idea to replace it. The cowl panel should be held by a couple of hex bolts, but in my case, it's zip ties. Make sure that the sensors are also unplugged from the connectors and the clips that secure them to the cowl panel. Voila, it's out. Now we can target the air filter top cover. For that, we need a size 5 hex screwdriver bit. In order to remove the air duct tube snorkel part, we need to unscrew a single, size 5 hex socket cap screw. Mine also has a zip tie at the back of it holding it in place because the small plastic clip that gives it a snug fit is missing on it. It should look like the one on the right. My air filter is clean but if yours looks like this definitely get a new one. Next up the front strut brace needs to be loosened up to give the air filter top cover that little extra wiggling room we need when we're taking it out. Also, it gives us access to this hex screw. So first, let's remove the bolt on the front strut brace using a E14 star socket. Then we're gonna use a size 5 hex screwdriver bit and remove the bolts that hold the back cover to the engine. I recommend using a socket extension to reach all the bolts on the air filter top cover. They're also size 5. Locate the four socket head screws holding the air filter top cover. They might be an E10 star type, so use an E10 star socket for them. The first three socket head screws can be removed using a standard size 5 hex socket piece. But the last one at the back is tricky, hence the thin socket extension which I used. Be very patient and careful. The air filter top cover slides out, but it will take some time until you find the right angle. Then to remove the air filter, you just slide it out. This one is clean, so I'll reuse it later. Let's remove the air intake turbo boost pipe held by two size 5 socket head cap screws. Don't worry, they won't fall out, the bolts stay with the boost pipe. Pull it towards you to unplug it from the top air filter housing and the bottom air inlet part of the turbo. Now we have clearance to inspect the turbine shaft and wheel for any significant play. 
Now with the air filter out, locate the three sealing caps at the bottom of the air filter box. Pull them up and you reveal the heat shield underneath them. The heat shield looks like this and is clipped in from the front. The key is to push it down and it pops out, then simply pull it out from underneath. With no heat shield, you'll see the top three bolts that mount the turbo to the manifold. On my M47 engine, I had two size 12 bi-hexagonal head bolts and a single size 8 hex socket cap screw. I had to use a very long socket extension and a 75cm breaker bar. The bolts are torqued at only 50Nm but mine was seized up. And do not, I repeat, do not underestimate these. They're also very tricky to get out if they stay inside. Next, let's disconnect the intercooler boost pipe hose held by a T30 torque screw on the right and a size 5 hex socket cap screw on the left. You can also remove this rubber hose to make more room. Slide the bracket back and pop the hose out. Now is a good time to jack up the front of the car to gain access from under it. Secure it with the wheel chalks and use the front central jacking point. Also make sure you use the jack stands on each side to place at the correct mounting points. You also have to remove the undercarriage cover held by multiple size 8 hex screws. Locate the intercooler boost pipe that we looked on from the top and use a screwdriver to release the retaining spring on the intercooler side. Pull the pipe out and you should be able to completely take it out of the engine. Use a long flat head screwdriver to locate the turbo actuator plug. Go under the car and use the screwdriver to slowly pry it open. It's plastic so be careful and simply unplug it from the top of the engine. Things are about to get messy so cover it with a bag or a towel. Next we need to remove the EGR cooler. My EGR is actually blanked. It's held by two T45 torque screws to the manifold, two size 6 hex socket cap screws and a single T40 torque screw. Lastly, the V-band clamp at the top. Here is a tip, don't try to remove it from the lower V-band clamp because it won't work. Trust me, don't ask. First, removing the T45 torque screws will release the support bracket above the turbo. Now is also the time to grab a catch pan or a tray, a zip tie and a rubber glove with no holes in it. We'll need it for later. Okay, so let's attack the first two size 6 hex socket cap screws located at the bottom and top. I recommend using a thin socket extension with a size 6 hex bit for easier access. First, the bottom hex socket cap screw. Second, the top hex socket cap screw located right here. The third screw is a T40 torque screw located under the EGR thermostat hose clamp. You might need a magnet to get it once unscrewed. Finally, located at the top of the EGR cooler, you have the V-band clamp. Use a flathead screwdriver and make sure to loosen the V-band clamp completely. I don't recommend the next step and I ended up accidentally disconnecting the EGR thermostat from the connector rather than the rubber hose itself. Instead, use the hose clamp holding the rubber hose to the EGR thermostat right here to do it. Also, don't disconnect the top hose clamp under the EGR coolant. It won't come out. Instead, disconnect the lower one. Use the catch panel tray to avoid spillage of coolant and use the glove and zip tie to block the hose from spilling more coolant. The way I blocked it looks something like this. Now you can remove the EGR coolant and thermostat. See, this is why this hose clamp is the better option. Release the retaining spring for the hose connected to the thermostat and be ready as quite a bit of coolant is going to come out of it. It also requires quite a bit of force to pull out. Same goes here, a glove and a zip tie will keep it blocked from spilling more coolant. Dry up the spilled coolant and take extra care to clean it off from the spilled surfaces. It's deadly for animals, be careful. Technically, this should be our next victim, but it's impossible to get to this bolt, so instead we'll work around it. Our next priority is to get the V-band clamp that connects the rear of the turbo to the catalytic converter. You'll need a size 13 hex socket for the bolt. This part is going to be very tricky, since the angle for the bolt is very limited and the bolt itself is in a such an obscure location. I've tried multiple different ways to get to it, but I failed. 
So my solution was three socket extensions plus a universal joint adapter for the extra flexibility. By supporting this setup with my left hand, I had enough room to loosen the bolt. Since the V-band clamp goes all around, you need to remove the bolt completely. And if like me, you find that the V-band clamp is slightly seized up, you need something to pry it open completely to loosen it. To gain extra clearance for the turbo, unplug the lambda sensor connector that comes up from the catalytic converter. Now, if you remember, we couldn't get to this bolt earlier. This bolt holds the top side of the turbo oil feed pipe. So instead, we'll disconnect it from the bottom side. It's located right under the right side of the turbo and is held by a size 10 hex bolt and a washer. All we need is a socket extension and a 10mm socket. Please note, you may have noticed that in some of the clips there'll still be parts attached to the engine that you would have already removed. This is because I removed the turbo in a much more difficult sequence of steps and I decided to rearrange the footage to make it easier to follow. So don't be phased by that. Once we have the bottom side of the oil feed pipe disconnected, we have to head under the engine for the last couple of steps. First, locate the last turbo mount bolt and right beside it you also find the turbo's lubrication hose and its two hose clamp connections. There are two connections for the lubrication hose, but I highly recommend going after the top one, as it's facing the front of the engine. It's hard to locate and see in the dark, but it's placed at about 4 o'clock away from the turbo. Once located, you need a flathead screwdriver to loosen up the connection. And finally, the last mounting bolt under the turbo is a socket size 13. In order to get to it, slide the extension bar right here. Before unscrewing it, make sure you have eye protection as it may fall and hit you in the face. <laughs> like it almost happened to me. Guys, this is our last step. Remove the nut that connects, I don't know, either the aircon or compressor line that's linked to the mount on the left side of the turbo. It's a size 10 ratchet and it requires quite a bit of unscrewing as the movement is very restricted and you don't have much wiggling room. This will potentially get us the extra room we need to get the turbo out. The next part I've left with the sound on and the duration is slightly altered but I wanted to show you exactly how the turbo gets removed so that you can get an idea of how the turbo gets installed when you get your new one or the replacement or whatever. The angle at which it comes out is very specific and reversing it will be the key to installing your new one. As we pull the turbo out, the gasket which sits between the turbo and the exhaust manifold will fall and you must replace it anyway when replacing your turbo. The turbo itself is quite heavy so take your time with it. I know I did. Make sure you're always giving it enough clearance to slowly move it out. And here we have it, the turbo is out. Hopefully this video helped you. I've left all the links for the tools and parts needed in the description below. I'll be very grateful if you decide to use them to support me and the channel. Also make sure to leave a comment below and tell me how it went. Was the video helpful? Any other tips, anything else that everyone else that's doing this type of job should know? Leave it down below. Good luck to you all, have a nice day.